Okay, and uh, hopefully everything sounds the same. I've had to take a break, and actually it was a day-long break, and I'm back uh, uh, to talk about the importance, the last topic. Kind of forgot what I was talking about. I said uh, something about research methods is important in general. It's how we generate uh, knowledge in psychology. That's true. Also, uh, psychology, in, it's very different than other fields in that our methodology, not the content matter, seems to hold the whole discipline together. Uh, the research work I do is incredibly different than Dr. Viegas and his work with rats and brains, for example. Uh, but the one thing that we share in common is this common research methodology. And then finally, uh, it's important outside of being a psychologist, uh, the type of research method techniques I'm going to teach you can be applied to a lot of questions in real life. Uh, in the first uh, couple, uh, in the first chapter or so, uh, the textbook talks about pseudoscience, uh, these uh, techniques that are trying to get money from you uh, by claiming that they're sciences. And so, by understanding what a real science is, you're better equipped to evaluate what is real and legitimate and what isn't. So uh, research methods, an important topic. Oh, and I just realized I didn't switch over to a slideshow, so I'll do that right now. And now we need to catch up. Okay, an, introdu uh, introduction, an introduction to the process. Uh, what do you need for an online course? Well, you need a computer. Uh, that's pretty obvious. Uh, also, uh, you need to have a place where that computer is. Uh, ideally, you should have a, you know, a computer in your room, your bedroom, or away from other people. A computer that's like in the family room, uh, where other people are going to be, that's going to be diff difficult to work there and study there. So, uh, you need to have a place where you can work. Uh, the computer, you should have a relatively fast computer. I always like to say if you watch YouTube videos on your computer and you don't see the circle of dots all the time, then things go well. Uh, we do a lot of stuff that takes a lot of bandwidth, and so you need to have things like that at home so that you can uh, you know, easily work on the computer. Now, while I say that, as the ideal, I know that a lot of students uh, do this at work during their lunch hour or after uh, work. And if you think you can do that, uh, I encourage you to try because I want to try to get more people through this course. And that's why I'm teaching it online. Uh, but ideally, you should have a computer of your own in a place that's your own. Uh, then you need the soft skills. Uh, this is what in IO psychology we call the skills that you need to get into the workplace. That is, you need be, to be able to organize your time. You need to be able to set goals for yourself. You need to be able uh, to uh, uh, be, you know, uh, be able to understand material as you read it. Uh, remember, we're not going to meet in person, so I'm not going to be there to explain things to you or to answer your questions for three hours a week. Uh, so those are some of the things you need. How often should you be thinking about going online? I'd say at the very least once a day, and sometimes a couple times a day. Uh, on the other side, I, your professor, I'll be checking uh, you know, Blackboard several times a day, uh, including the weekends during the semester. So it's very intense for me. And so I wouldn't uh, require you to do something that I'm not doing more of myself. Uh, and remember, the third day of the semester is the last day to drop with a 100% refund. Remember that. Books. Uh, we're using a new book this semester. And it's open source, so that means it's free. And uh, so you don't have to go to the bookstore for that. Uh, you can look at the link, get the link from the syllabus and download it today. Or uh, you could wait and uh, look on Blackboard, and I ha I'll have a copy of it on Blackboard. So the main assignment for whoops, this semester is a literature review in psychology. That is, I feel that you can meet the major goals for this course 
uh, you know, in one way by having students do a literature review. Uh, this is going to be a 15 to 20 page literature review. It's going to be on a current research topic. And I expect you to uh, review uh, about 10 research articles. And uh, one requirement is that you are going to make theoretical and methodological conclusions. Uh, now, for that, we're going to be spending all of the semester doing preparatory assignments so that you understand exactly what I mean by uh, research articles, theoretical and methodological conclusions. Uh, we're going to be doing drafts, several drafts. Uh, so in working up to this, we're going to be doing a lot of writing each week. And you can probably expect that there'll be one uh, type of writing assignment due each week. Uh, not huge writing assignments every week, but uh, you will be writing something every week. Uh, and again, uh, one bullet point I left out, this is not a topic or term paper. Uh, you know, the topic or term paper that you're used to writing for class, that is for a content-based class. If in uh, abnormal psychology you were asked to write a term paper, you would choose a topic, PTSD, for example, and write about what we know about that. Research methods is not what we know about something. It's how we know what we know. And so your literature review is really a paper about how do we know what we know about PTSD. And again, that's that really basic important distinction between this class and other classes that will take you a while to get used to. So as I said, we're going to have preliminary assignments that get us ready for that. Uh, the first week, we're not going to be doing any content, any research methods. We're going to be doing uh, you know, assignments about working online. Uh, also, uh, throughout the semester, every other week, we're going to have a webinar. Uh, the webinars are you know, uh, you know, where we log on, and you can ask me questions. And I have a little lecture for about 20 minutes or 10 minutes about a topic for that week. Uh, and participation is graded. You can participate in two ways. If you're there synchronously, that is, if you're online when I'm online, uh, that counts as participation if you can't. Uh, which I assume a lot of you won't be able to do. Uh, it's going to be recorded, and then you can watch it, and then uh, write a simple paper, a short paper based on that, and that would get you your participation. Uh, other preliminary assignments, we're going to start out early this semester with a, uh, you know, you're going to do a review of a student's literature review, because that's the uh, paper I want you to turn in. So you're going to read another student's paper, and uh, you know, review it. Uh, then we're going to do an assignment where we're going to read a research study and write about it. It'll be the same study we all write about. Uh, then I'm going to ask you to turn in a working topic, just a one sentence or two sentence topic about what you uh, plan to be doing your literature review on. Uh, then the first major assignment is I'm going to ask you to uh, uh, submit a draft, a write-up of the main body of your final paper, uh, the first five research articles. Uh, then I'm going to ask, <coughs> excuse me, for a draft, <coughs> sorry, for a draft of the conclusions. And then uh, about uh, three weeks or a month or so before the end of the semester, I'll ask for a draft of the whole literature review, that is everything the 10 articles and the uh, conclusion section, uh, and then uh, at the end of the semester, the final draft of the literature review. And then throughout this, uh, you'll be doing peer reviews. Uh, I think that peer reviews is very important in really learning how to write and to think about writing and thinking about how we're writing about research methods. And so uh, for many of the assignments, we're going to be doing peer reviews. Uh, we do have exams. There are three exams, about 40 to 50 multiple choice questions. Uh, I'm going to give you the study topics before the exams. Uh, and these will be online. You'll have three days to do the exams. Uh, you get three attempts. Uh, they're time limited, so you have about maybe 100 minutes uh, to do each attempt. So you have three of these attempts, and I'll only grade the highest 
grade that you score. And here's a listing of the grade weights. You notice that nothing is really big. Uh, that's because this is a writing class, so we do have to give weights to the writing assignments. And also, it means that the exams are really not that important. They're only 10% each of your grade. Uh, so normally, you're used to having exams be 30%, 20%, 50% of your grade. The exams are much more trivial. That's why I, in a way, made them so easy. They're going to have, you're going to have the topics, and then you're going to have three chances to do the exam. And that's going to, you know, make it easy. But please do prepare for them. And there's my uh, uh, puppy dog, my old puppy dog, Floss. And, oh, that's the end of uh, this talk. Uh, this uh, lecture. So any questions? Uh, so, uh, you know, what will happen is when I get the uh, Blackboard site online, hopefully a week or two before the semester begins, I'll have the discussion uh, board of the online office hours, and that'll be a good place to ask questions about the class, the textbook, and uh, any assignments. I would prefer you, if you have questions about the class in general, or the book or the assignments to post them on the discussion board. And look at the discussion board first to see if somebody else has asked it and I've answered it. Uh, if you have any personal matters or private things like grades, uh, email me at washton at york.cuny.edu. Other than that, I will see you online the first day of the semester.